Welcome to Driver's Therapy. This is really exciting because we are starting off video two of our course of how to use a multimeter like a pro. In this video, we're gonna be looking at this multimeter. We're gonna be looking at all the settings and operations. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at this Fluke 110 Plus series multimeter. This is part of the Fluke brand and it is considered one of the entry level multimeters. So before we start looking at the settings and operations, let's go ahead and look at the physical multimeter itself. As you can tell, the multimeter has a knob and it has a display in the front and in the bottom it has the ports where the test leads go. The test leads simply pull out and push in. And on a side note, other multimeters will have different ports and usually those ports are associated with higher amperage or fuse ports. So you could put your test leads in there when you're testing those different level type or higher uh, level of amperage tests. Okay, as we turn this multimeter in the back, we have uh, looks like cutouts or specific moldings on the back of the multimeter. And this is where you could store your multimeter leads to keep them nice and secure and you don't get them lost. And of course we have a collapsible stand for it. And underneath the collapsible stand, we have a port and that will be for the battery. So you can replace that. Let's go ahead and turn this over. Okay, now that we've looked at the multimeter itself, let's go ahead and look at the leads. Now, of course, red and black is usually associated with positive and negative, and that isn't incorrect. But as far as the correct terminology, the black one is the COM wire, and that's gonna be the COM, COM, and the red one's gonna be the V wire. But essentially, the, this is positive and this is negative. And now, at this point in time, we're gonna go ahead and fire up the multimeter and look at the settings and operations. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this knob over. We're gonna go ahead and put it on direct current. We'll talk further about the symbols and everything here in a bit. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about these buttons in the front, what they are, and we're gonna demonstrate some of them. We won't demonstrate all of them, but we'll go ahead and tell you what they are. So first off, the hold button. The hold button, essentially what that does, it's going to freeze the display. So if you're taking a measurement of something, and I'm gonna to try to do this because it's a little difficult sometimes, as you can see, it's a little erratic, and the reason why it's erratic is because I'm moving the lead around. If I held the lead in place with the battery, it would give us a precise measurement, but I wanna give an erratic reading so I can show you what the hold does. So as you can see, it's moving, and when I press the hold button, it's gonna hold that measurement, and it held it. If you wanna unfreeze it, and you're gonna press hold, and it goes back to going back to a variable or erratic reading, depending on what you're testing. Our next button is the minimum, maximum, and average button. This button calculates the minimum and maximum input readings and provides you an average as well. So let's go ahead and try it out. I'm gonna press the button once, and this puts us at the max reading. I'm gonna take our leads, and I'm gonna test this battery right here. And we have a max reading of 1.810 volts DC. When I press the button one more time, that gives us our minimum reading of negative 0.009 volts DC. When I press the button one more time, this is our average during the duration of our input reading. When we go ahead and hold down the button, that's gonna reset it. Our next button is gonna be the range button. The range button allows for the manual and auto range to be selected. In auto range mode, the meter selects the range with the best resolution. In manual range mode, you override auto range and select the range yourself. The orange button is the function button. Under the rotary knob, as you could tell, you have the white functions and then you have this single yellow one here. What this button does is it allows you to shift between the two functions. So on this particular function, you have alternating current and DC current for a millivolt check. So this is how you do it. DC, AC. Underneath that button, you have the backlight button, and what that does is it allows you to turn on the backlight and then turn it off. We're gonna start off with off, of course, that's pretty self-explanatory, that turns off the unit, 
but we're going to start from left to right. So let's go ahead and start with the auto button. The auto V position. What this does, it allows the meter to select a DC or AC voltage measurement based on the input applied between the positive and the comm jacks. Essentially, what that does is it's gonna auto detect if you're testing something uh, that is either AC or DC within the meter's uh, uh, volt range and it will auto select which one it is for you. Let's go ahead and go to AC voltage. And let's tie that back into the auto V. As you could tell, if you know something's AC voltage, you simply put in AC voltage range. If you know it's DC, you put it on a DC range. The auto V will let you, uh, will help you decide which one it is if you're not sure uh, what you're testing, which I think is a neat feature. So going back to this, this is the AC uh, voltage check right here. Below it is the direct current. Our next setting has two functions. This millivolt setting has an AC symbol in white, but here in yellow it has a DC symbol. The way that you toggle through that is by pressing the function button. And this will allow you to test both AC and DC millivolts. And right below it is gonna be the ohm symbol, and this is gonna allow you to test resistance. And underneath that is my personal favorite, and that's the audio continuity tester and what this does it allows you to detect a short and also allows you to test for continuity in a wire or in a circuit. On a quick note and caution, understanding your multimeter specifications and ratings for whatever electrical work you're going to be doing is going to be very important for safety and accuracy. If you look on this multimeter we have what says CAT3 in the bottom next to the leads. And on the lead itself, you have CAT2. Now in this video, we're not gonna dive deep into CAT2, 3, and 4. That's more residential electrical stuff or just building electrical stuff. We're not gonna be dealing with that. But I wanted to make sure that we stated that you need to know the specifications of your multimeter if you're gonna be dealing with that type of work. So at this point, we're familiar with the settings and operations of our multimeter. So what's next? Well, we're gonna take our multimeter in video three. I'm gonna go out there and do some testing in the garage with car batteries, fuses, and other things around the house as well. So you guys stay tuned. We really appreciate you watching the video and we will see you soon for video three.